Welcome to another Train to Game Radio production with Danny Palmer. Nevin Dravinsky, producer, UFC Undisputed 3. Okay, to begin with, Nevin, can you tell us what exactly your role as producer entails? Uh, well, as a producer, you know, I'm the project manager, essentially. I mean, I, the, in every development team, uh, a producer kind of uh, wears different hats. Um, you know, my, my role uh, in development uh, here at THQ, uh, we, we do different, uh, sort of different sort of hybrid style development. A lot of the leads uh, that make the UFC game are based at the publisher, which is a little bit of a departure from, uh, you know, usually you have very few production people at uh, the publisher and then you have more at the developer. Well, we do this hybrid style development where you have a lot of... Uh, publisher support a lot of direct direction comes from the publishing side so as a producer you know my job is to get it from the keyboard to the shelf uh, anything that needs to happen uh, you know we always say production gets it done so whether it's setting up VO sessions uh, looking at budgets managing the schedule flying out to Japan to, to ask what's going on or you know do press interviews and demos whatever needs to get done that usually falls to production and uh, that's uh, that's what I do can you tell us a bit about the game design process then and what's new this year well, I mean, the game design process, uh, it, you know, working with Ukes now for five years on UFC, um, you know, it's a very uh, collaborative effort. Uh, you know, we, it requires a lot of trips out to Japan where we all sit in a room with a translator and hash out, you know, specific details and what are we trying to achieve, what are our large goals, and then really diving in at a deep level and, you know, creating documentation to kind of highlight the specific necessity of a, of a mode or a feature and hashing out all the, you know, uh, problems uh, that, that might arise with that. Um, so, you know, new things that we've added this year really is a direct result of, you know, kind of analyzing what we've done in previous years, what worked, what didn't work, and how to make this not only the best undisputed game, not only the best MMA game, but just the best game gen- in general. You know, we think we have a fun fighting game at its core here, and we're trying to play up the things that we do really well and, and you know, let people enjoy it, let people understand what we're doing and kind of seamlessly educate them in the game this year. So uh, we've added a lot, new, a lot of new uh, features. We have a new alternate control scheme to kind of ease the, the barrier of entry for new users into uh, the ground uh, grapple game. We've also added a graphic-based submission system. The submission system, without question, has been one of the most polarizing features of the Undisputed franchise. And so this new submission system, uh, having a graphic interface on the screen, really clearly indicates why you won or lost a submission. So, uh, you know, we felt that was really important, uh, you know, to kind of uh, help people learn learn the game and, and sort of, uh, you know, make sure that they weren't frustrated. Uh, on top of that, uh, as mentioned, we have a real focus on in game education where we're doing uh, things like overt tutorial prompts that pop up on the screen that you can turn off in the pause menu um, a lot of uh, in between round advice uh, you know we've really revamped our tutorial system done a lot of voiceover to kind of you know engage you more in the system as opposed to just reading a wall of text so you know again five years of development and now having more time between cycles having gone away from the annualized title cycle really allows us to kind of sit back and sort of analyze this game and really put in what's important and, and work on the systems that, that we feel are ne- necessary to make a great game. For what reasons did you take the game away from an annual uh, process then? Well, to our executives' credits, I think uh, they saw that you know if, if we really wanted to do the best uh, uh, undisputed game, we really needed the extra time, especially with this year. Uh, you know, we had uh, a lot of things happen in the, in the, uh, with regards to the UFC license. They merged with uh, the WEC, so they brought in all these new fighters, new weight classes uh, into the UFC fold. So you know, from an asset perspective, that just required a lot more work. All of a sudden, you're introducing a ton of new guys uh, into the game. Um, you know, new audio that goes with that, new new model creation but then one of the other features that we were really pushing for this year was the introduction of pride fighting championships which is a now defunct japanese organization it was an mma organization that uh, zufa the parent company of ufc bought out to essentially bring their fighters in so again you know to really make that work and to really you're essentially making another game within the game um you know it just requires a lot of time i mean these games uh, you know are are difficult to make they require a lot of tuning a lot of effort a lot of polish and the asset creation in general is just absurd i mean we have over a hundred 150 fighters in the game this year, all uniquely modeled. Um, so it, it requires a lot of effort, and you know, uh, I think the extra time only benefits the game. We were able to add things like uh, fighter entrances, you know, tune the the shaders, tune the combat system, the striking animations, everything that really. You know, from a development perspective, you'll always take more time. You know, unfortunately, you know, it's a business and games have to come out when they do. But, uh, you know, we're really thankful that we had the opportunity to kind of make this the best undisputed game ever. The fighters look very impressive. Uh, Can you tell us a bit about the modeling process? Yes, absolutely. Well, the modeling process that we employ um, is, 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 you know, fairly detailed. So we start by taking photographs of these fighters. And we literally will... 
track them down all around the world to get them photographed. Ideally, we get them photographed at UFC fights, but that's not always uh, um, you know the best case scenario. Sometimes we have to find them you know in their home countries. Um, and uh, what happens is we'll take pictures of them, like every inch of the skin, uh, at, at all points. Uh, we have them uh, go through, uh, you know, a very staged kind of turnaround process. Take pictures of them at various angles, every tattoo, every mole, every uh, muscle striation. Um, so we get those photographs and then take those into a modeling uh, um, program. We'll build the actual physical mesh, the 3D uh, uh, representation from those photographs. And then we'll actually take the photographs themselves and wrap that skin texture around the models. So you get a very accurate representation and sometimes almost too good. Sometimes if a guy is uh, coming in and we photograph him and he's slightly out of shape, his model comes back slightly out of shape, you know, and we have to go back and kind of, you know, <laughs> tone them up, so to speak. Or a guy might have like a bruise that we didn't catch that he got uh, during a, a practice session. It might be on his face or something, and we'll go back and have to tweak that. You know, a lot of little things that go into just creating these models. It's a, it's a really, really uh, detailed and uh, uh, difficult process, but the game's so much better for it for having that attention to detail in there. A lot of people out there might not know a lot about UFC as a whole. Uh, what would you say to them about why, why should they buy the game? Well, I mean, I think the game stands on its own just as a fun game. I mean, UFC is the number one fighting franchise in the world, but we made a great combat fighting game. You know, I mean, if you enjoy uh, rapid response and 60 frames a second games, and, um, you know, I think with the new control scheme, it's really going to allow new users to get into the game, have fun, you know, knock their buddies out, and, and, and just enjoy the experience. So, you know, obviously, if you're a UFC fan, it's a no-brainer. I mean, yeah, you want to play the game of your, you know, your favorite fighters, but I think even new users that aren't even familiar with the UFC is certainly in areas where they may not get the, the programming on TV will still enjoy what the game has to offer and the UFC recognizes that that you know we're able to reach a lot of audiences that they may not have uh, access to because we're a game and because we have that different sort of access so um, you know I think I think the game as itself stands on its own even if it wasn't called UFC it would still be a fun game and the, the new control system just helps that as well, does it? Absolutely. I mean, we really recognize that we had a deep technical fighting game at its core here, a very nuanced control scheme that, you know, certainly new users that maybe didn't want to invest the time in these quarter circle and greater than quarter circle inputs on the right stick, um, or just the inherent nature of the game. It's very frenetic. You know, you, you get tense uh, and the, the adrenaline starts kicking, and you may not execute uh, the maneuver uh, correctly. So this alternate control scheme you have simply flicking up and down on the right stick for uh, executing transactions. Positions, I think really lessens the barrier of entry for new users, allows you to have fun, get into the game, enjoy yourself, and then when you're re ready to graduate to the alternate, uh, the classic control scheme, uh, you know, then you can feel more confident and have fun in what you're doing. And if you don't mind a little bit about yourself, how did you get into the games industry? Um, I got into the games industry uh, in, in kind of a roundabout way. So uh, when I was young, I, I was always... Uh, uh, obsessed with animation, I probably have watched every cartoon uh, that's ever out. Uh, you know, I'm still I still uh, record every single cartoon that's on Cartoon Network and whatnot. Um, and I was I was I wanted to be an animator, and then uh, you know uh, while I was going through college. Um, it was really the dot-com boom was really happening, and so I got into computer programming uh, and realized that I didn't, uh, while I graduated with a computer science degree, I realized that I didn't want to program. I just didn't derive like a certain amount of satisfaction out of it. And um, I really wanted to find something that was sort of a mix between having that technical background as well as being artistic. And I ended up doing an internship at a, a video game uh, publisher, and um, it, was in, it was in a production capacity because uh, I said, look, I don't want to program. You know, I'd just like to kind of learn this business. And the associate producer on the project that I was working on quit two weeks after I started as an intern. So as an intern, I was acting associate producer for six months. And then uh, after college, uh, yeah, they hired me straight away. And, you know, the rest is sort of history. I kind of fell into production, which is a great kind of middle ground between, you know, uh, programming and, uh, you know, design and and uh, the, the artistic elements and it was actually kind of a perfect fit and I found that I really enjoyed it and I really just like being able to do different things uh, day in and day out um, so you know it just kind of stuck and here, here I am. So what advice would you give to those looking to get into the games industry? Well, my, my biggest advice would be, you know, get an internship, uh, you know, work for free, go anywhere and say, look, I'm passionate, I, I know this stuff. Um, and, and it's really, I mean, there's multiple ways to get into the industry, right? I mean, uh, you know, you have your producers, you have your designers, uh, you have uh, people that are in marketing, people that are in PR, uh, writers, for example. I mean, the industry is growing so rapidly and the, the, the games are becoming so complex. You know, I have interns uh, on my team, for example, that 
uh, are photography majors at you know really good art colleges, and they just want to learn about video games. But essentially, they're, I'm having them utilize their skills uh, to create you know in-game graphics or uh, create PR materials or say, hey, take these screenshots or touch up this uh, this menu graphic or give me a composition for this or that. Um, so intern interning, I would say, is the best way to sort of prove yourself very rapidly to say uh, you know a publisher or developer. A more you know a, a classic approach is I would say get into QA as fast as possible. Um, there's really a lack of good quality uh, uh, QA people. I think uh, a lot of people don't take the, the, the job very seriously. And if you're able to prove yourself uh, in the QA department, though it might be a little bit of a longer track, uh, you'll certainly uh, you know, catch the attention of, say, a producer or, or a developer somewhere. And as long as you get it done, so to speak, and people can trust you, uh, there's no limit to where you can go. So, I mean, really, the, the, my, best, my best advice is just get in anywhere. It's a very small industry. I mean, you know, I've been in for, say, 10 years, and at these kind of shows, I mean, I keep running into people that I've worked with on my first jobs, and I keep in touch with people that I've worked with on my first job. And those are the people that are going to continually find you jobs if you perform well. So, again, that's my advice. Just get in anywhere that you can and, you know, just, just prove yourself and make sure that you work hard and people won't forget it. And finally, when is UFC Undisputed 3 released? UFC Undisputed 3 will be released on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 in January of 2012. Great, thanks for your time, Nevin. Uh, my pleasure, thank you. Thank you. For more information, www.tradetogame.com.